Hi, it is a little bit early for me to be doing this video, but I'm so excited. I just can't wait. This is my May TBR. I'm still working through my April TBR, um, and I'm not going to do my wrap up video for April until well after I've posted this, but I wanted to post this TBR early because I thought that maybe some people might find uh, suggestions for what to read if they're participating in Katie at Books and Things readathon um, for 1900 to 1950 books. So first I'm going to introduce those. I'm also going to talk about the other books I'm going to read next month. Um, I'm not going to play Jenga Read My Shelf in May um, because I will be reading a significant amount of books for this uh, readathon and a lot of them come from my shelf anyway. So I'm going to just focus on those and then a handful of other books that I have to read for book clubs and um, Charles Dickens and all of those things, but no Jenga this month or for May, for the month of May. Um, and then, like I said, I'll do a wrap up of April later. So um, without further ado, here is my TBR for the month of May. First up, I will be reading this book, which I don't have a copy of yet, this is The Yield by Tara June Winch, and I will be reading that for my In Real Life book club. Um, the book was just picked yesterday, so I haven't had a chance to purchase it yet, and I purchase all of the books that I read for my book club, so that's coming, um, and I will read that in May. I will also continue with my reading of all of Charles Dickens, and the next book on the list is Martin Chuzzlewitz. Um, it's a thick one. I've never read it before. I'm excited. I hope that it's awesome. Um, last month I read Barnaby Reg and oh my goodness, I absolutely loved it. I'm also going to read two books for, uh, to continue with reading for the Read Harder Challenge um, for a book in translation by a non-Western author. I will be reading The Salmon Who Dared to Leap Higher by An Do Hyun. I'm excited about that and look how pretty that book is. Like, can you see it catch the light? It's so pretty. Um, and then for a sci-fi anthology edit edited by a woman of color. Um, I will be reading Octavia's Brood, edited by Adrian, Mari Brown, and Walida Emerisha. Um, these are all sci-fi stories. I don't read sci-fi very often at all, um, so this will be definitely outside of my comfort zone, um, but I'm looking forward to it. Then there are a few there are three exactly books that are next in a series that I would like to continue with those series. So um, last month I read The Vengeance of Mothers, which was the second book um, in a series about um, white women who, fictional series, about white women who um, joined the Plains Indians in the 1800s as their brides. Um, and so I read the first one, I think it's A Thousand White Women, is that what it's called? Yeah, 1,000 White Women um, a while ago. Then last month I realized there was a sequel to it, The Vengeance of Mothers, so I read that. And then I read, or I will read this one, the third and final book in that trilogy uh, by Jim Fergus. It is called Strong Heart, and it is the Lost Journals of May Dodd and Molly McGill. So I am looking forward to finishing that trilogy. This book just came out. I pre-ordered it once I realized that it existed, um, and it was delivered a couple of weeks ago, but I've been holding off on reading it. Then I want to read the third book in the Mirror Visitor series. Last month I finally read the second book. Um, I had started it back in November and then put it on pause and didn't pick it up again until last month. Started over from the beginning and absolutely loved it. Read um, the first book in that series, um, which is called A Winter's Promise. Um, and the second one is called uh, The Missing of Claire de Lune. Um, and now I am will read the third book, which is The Memory of Babel. I'm really enjoying these so much. I keep saying this over and over, but it's true. They remind me of Studio Ghibli films, and they're just so much fun to read, and I just really, really enjoy them. Um, the final book is pre-ordered and is coming out, I think, in October or November, so I will have a wait uh, to finish this series, but I'm excited to read the third book. And then I would also like to continue reading on in 
of course, <laughs> my Irish Country Doctor series. So this one will be a Dublin student doctor. And the rest of the books that I will be reading for the month all fulfill prompts for Katie's 1900 to 1950 readathon, and I'm so excited about this. Um, as I said, most of these are coming off of my shelf. I did purchase a couple of them uh, from Better World Books specifically for this, but also because I've been wanting to read them for a long time and just haven't had like the push to do it. Um, and then two of them are rereads, but I'm so excited to reread them. Okay, so first of all, there are 10 prompts, kind of. There are kind of 10 prompts. Um, and I will be reading 11 books because I'm extra like that. But here is the deal. The prompts are to read a book um, that is from the country I'm from, to read a book that is from a country I am not from, to read a genre class, uh, a genre classic. Um, so a book from 1900 to 1950 that um, is a specific genre sh such as a romance or a western or what have you. Um, Sci-fi. Um, and then we have read something that is not a novel. So short story collection or a play or poetry or work of nonfiction, essays, those sorts of things. Um, and then to read something that is set during or explores World War I or World War II. Um, then she has additional bonus rounds, prompts. So the additional bonus prompt is to read a book from every like decade. So you get the picture. So here is what I've come up with. Um, also, I want to make it very clear that, you know, you could easily read way fewer books than I am, but I had a hard enough time like cutting down as was. So I do have 11 books for 10, 10 possible categories. We're going to start with E.M. Forrester's A Room with a View. I have not read Ian Forrester's A Room with a View. I have watched the movie a very long time ago, but I've not wa uh, read the actual book. So I'm excited to read this, and this is fulfilling the category of 1900 to 1909. Then the next book I will read is my genre classic because it was published in, by the way, this was published in 1908. And my next book was published in 1912. And it's my genre classic. And that is Writers of the Purple Sage by Zane Grey. This is a reread for me. Um, I read this having never read a single Western. I'd never read anything, Lonesome Dove, nothing. Um, and I absolutely loved it. I've since tried to pick up a couple of other Zane Greys and hated them. So this is a one off for me, but I really enjoy it. And it's been a few years and I would like to reread it. So it fulfills the genre classic category. So I'm going to read it 1912. The next book I am going to read comes from a country that I have never read a book from. I've never read anything by an author from Mexico. So I will be reading the Underdogs, a novel of the Mexican Revolution by Mariano Azuela. Um, and I am super excited to read this. This was published in 1915, um, and it is fulfilling the 1910 to 1919 category. So super excited about this. My option for where I am not from, a country that I am not from, and that is Vera by um, Elizabeth von Armen. I'm trying to find her, I think her name. Yes, Elizabeth <laughs> by Elizabeth von Armen. Uh, you probably know Elizabeth von Armen from Enchanted April, but this is Vera, and I'm very excited to read this one. Um, Elizabeth von Armen is Australian, but she grew up and lived in England, and then she married a German, um, and I think that she would feel an affinity for all of those nationalities. Um, so I don't really know where to place this book, but I know that None of them are where I'm from. So this is from 1921. The next book I will read fulfills my 1920 to 1929 category, and it is a reread for me. And that is Kristen Lovren's Daughter by Sigrid Unstedt. This is a book from Denmark. It was published in 1922, and it is the first in a trilogy. You know what that means. This probably means that I'll read this one this month, and then you'll see the next two in the next coming months. So uh, this is a reread for me. It's been a really long time since I reread these. 
Um, but I have been wanting to reread them ever since I packed them a couple of moves ago. So feeling the urge to do that now. The next book that I will read was published in 1925, and it is my title to fulfill the Where I Am From prompt, and that is Gentlemen Prefer Blondes by Anita Luz. Um, of course, I've seen the Marilyn Monroe movie, uh, but, and love it, but I think this is different. Um, I think the movie might be based on the book, but the book, I think, is quite different from the movie. Um, and this actually includes the sequel to that book as well, but Gentlemen Marry Brunettes. And I will probably read that too, since it's pretty short. Um, I'm really excited to read this. At first, I was going to pick um, an F. Scott Fitzgerald or maybe reread The Great Gatsby. Uh, but then I saw this one and I was like, ooh, I think that I want to read that. That looks amazing. So, Book from where I'm from, 1925, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Um, the next book that I will read is my not a novel choice. Now, this one is maybe controversial if people want to get into that, um, but I will be reading uh, a short story collection called The Road to Yesterday. All of these pieces were written before 1950, um, but they were not collected and published as The Road to Yesterday until the 1970s. I'm going to say they were written in the right era, so I'm going to count them. Um, and this has been republished recently as uh, The Blythes Are Quoted. But these are just a bunch of short stories that aren't in the actual Anne of Green Gables books uh, by Ellen Montgomery, but they are about Gilbert and Anne, even though the people on this cover have no resemblance to Gilbert or Anne in any way, shape, or form. I'll forgive them for that, though. Um, but I am excited to read this. I've had this on my shelf for a very long time and have never picked it up. I actually did not realize that it was stories about Anne and Gilbert, partly because of the cover. I thought that it was just a collection of Ellen Montgomery short stories like By the Shore or that collection of her ghost stories or whatever. Um, but... I thought wrong. This actually belongs with uh, the Anna Green Gables set. So I'm excited to read this. And um, next, I will be reading the 1930 to 1939 choice. Now, this is why I have 11 books, because I couldn't ultimately decide between these two. And they're so different from each other. First, I will be reading from 1935, uh, Mulk Raj Anand's Untouchable. This is a work of fiction by an Indian author published in 1935. Um, and I'm really excited to read this. I can't say that I don't read a lot of Indian authors. Um, I lived in India for a long time and I've read a lot of Indian authors. In fact, some of my very favorite authors are from the subcontinent. Um, but I've never read this author and I've never, I don't think, read any classic literature. Everything I've read is contemporary. Um, so I'm excited to delve into this. And this author has multiple books, so I'm hoping that I enjoy it and find a new favorite author. But I couldn't um, not read this one as well. <sighs> My only Persephone classic, and I've never read it, um, but I've had it for a while. So this is Ms. Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson, and it was published in 1938. So this also fulfills the 1930 to 1939 category. I'm pulling it off my shelf and I'm reading it. I'm really excited. Yes, I've seen the movie. You know, books are almost always better than the movie. So I'm super excited to read this. Also, it feels really lighthearted. And a lot of the books that I'm reading are quite heavy. So I, you know, this is maybe my comic relief if it's funny, like the movie was a little bit funny, but also, you know, heartfelt. My 1940 to 1949 choice was published in 1946, and it is by a Greek author. And besides mythology, I've never read anything out of Greece, so I'm super excited about this one. I've never seen the movie or anything. I actually know nothing about this book. Zorba the Greek by Nikos Kazan. Zakis? Kazant Zakis? I've probably totally ruined that name. But anyway, it is one of, the, or Zorba, is one of the great characters of modern fiction, and I don't know anything about Zorba, but I will now. And then my last book 
is also maybe a little bit controversial because it was published in 1950, but I'm still counting it because I'm sure part of it was written in 1949. And this is to fulfill my set during World War I or II or exploring ideas about World War I, World War II. This is a book that I have wanted to read for such a long time. And when I saw it in this edition on Better World Books, I scooped it up. So I know this was also a movie or a TV show, I'm not sure, and I don't know very much about it at all, but this is from an Australian author. This is from Neville Shute. I have never read this book, but I'm so excited to read A Town Like Alice. I think that this book is controversial in a lot of ways. Um, I'm not sure what they are. I've purposefully not read much about it right now. I just know that it's a book that's not a classic that's been on my radar for a really long time and I am excited to read it. It has themes related to World War II. It takes place in Australia. It's by an Australian author and I was able to get it from Better World Books in a Pan Macmillan copy. Ah, it's so beautiful. I think technically I'm supposed to keep it, you know, within 1949 gonna count it and you can't stop me. Why would you want to? So anyway, maybe you have one or two ideas there that you didn't have before about what to read for this. Um, I purposefully tried to choose mostly books that would be new to me or that I haven't read in a while. I also, before I let myself dream about books, um, to purchase to fulfill these categories, um, I made myself quote unquote shop my own shelves. So the majority of these books I already owned um, and just had not read yet. And then a couple of them, as I pointed out, are actually rereads. So that's what I'm planning to read. Um, are you going to participate in this challenge? I really think you should. I think you should jump on this bandwagon now and find yourself some books that were published between 1900 and 1949 and join us on this journey. I mean, I am so excited about the literature that I'm going to read. And I'm also, you don't have to do it this way, but I'm also so excited that I'm reading from so many different places. I mean, England, the United States, Mexico, Australia, Germany, England, kind of. Denmark, the United States, Canada, India, England, Greece, and Australia. And then if I add to that, this is from Ireland. This is from France. This is from the United States and this is from the United States, but this is from Korea. And this is from England. I am having, oh, and my book club book is from Australia. I'm having such a global month next month with my reading. I want you to join, I really do. So if you are going to read along, um, you don't have to read 11 books, come on, that's just me. Please let me know, um, follow on Instagram, that's an awesome place to find me, follow on Goodreads, that's an awesome place to find me and find my reviews, my individual reviews for each of these books. See you around.